Okay, so yesterday after the you know morning sessions, I had come up to this adiabatic flame temperature. Okay, so given any fuel, how do you calculate the adiabatic flame temperature? So then in the afternoon, okay, Professor Kushari, I believe, did the equilibrium composition. So I will just go over my material. So this will be okay, somewhat of a repetition, but I will try to go quickly on that stuff. So to calculate the equilibrium composition, because in, in the products, okay, the major products are CO2, H2O, but you also have other species like CO, H2. So when you don't get complete combustion, also you get these other products. Complete combustion means, of course, you know you get mainly CO2 and H2O. Okay. So once you get these other products, then the temperature also is reduced. Okay. So we need to calculate both simultaneously, the temperature and composition. So for composition, the starting point is the second law. So this is the form we can use. So ds, the change in entropy, is greater than or equal to the amount of heat transfer to the system, or from the system. And then using the first law, okay, we can write this equation in this form. And then for, you know, we can convert this into per mole basis. Okay, so per mole basis, then when you integrate this from T1 to T1 and pressure P1 to P1, you get this equation. Okay. I believe all these notes will be given to you. I don't know whether they have already been given. Okay. <coughs> and from there, so this is all very basic thermodynamics. Okay. <coughs> then we define a reference state where so this is just for convenience, we define this where entropy is zero. When you have zero degree, you know, Kelvin temperature. Okay, so this is very convenient to calculate the entropy at any given pressure and temperature. So finally, for calculation purpose, we have, we use this equation. So this, this value, uh, which is only a function of temperature, so this is for any species i. So this can be tabulated. So we can go to the table to form, find this, or it can be written as a polynomial in temperature. So the so main point is that we can calculate this entropy of any species at a given temperature and pressure using this equation. So there are you know, three different examples here, okay. So for example, CO2 at 300 degree Kelvin, okay. So if the pressure is one atmosphere, then this term will be zero. And then if you go to the table and look for the value of this S zero at this temperature, this is the value. Okay. If you have a different temperature, then you just use the table for different. Now, if you also have different pressure, then of course, you know, this, so this example pressure is three atmosphere. So this 269.3 is from the table. And then <coughs> this pressure effect, you know, so this three over one. So that's the entropy of CO2, oh, oh, sorry, oh, oh, this is CO2. And then here I think I have O2 also. So similar. Okay, where you can calculate for any other species. Okay, now where it is used. Okay, so again, considering the second law in this form, you can write, okay, using, the, so bringing the first law of thermodynamics for delta Q, you can write this equation. So now if you have an isolated system under constant volume, so under constant volume and constant internal energy, ds can only be greater or equal to zero. Okay. 
so that means that equilibrium okay ds value will be maximum or oh sorry s value will be maximum and ds will be zero okay so always at maximum or minimum points okay the change will be zero so this is a good example that if you have you know mixture of co and o2 in the as reactants okay then at product side okay you ideally you will have co2 right co plus o2 so here in this example so your co plus 1 half o2 so this should give us co2 but okay in general you don't have just co2 so here what i'm considering is the certain amount of co2 decomposes back into co and o2 okay. so that's the alpha value so instead of co2 you'll have 1 minus alpha so this alpha co2 you can say alpha moles of co2 decompose into co and alpha over 2 o2 okay so then alpha becomes part of your calculation you have to calculate alpha and of course since you don't know alpha you don't know what will be the adiabatic flame temperature okay or the temperature of this mixture you know the product side okay. so now you <coughs> what you can do is you can take different values of alpha this is one way okay so here that the, there's a plot here so take different values of alpha for example if alpha is 0 okay that means it's all co2 okay and then, of course, you can calculate the what will be the area of equilibrium temperature, right? So that's simple, you know, CO plus half, one half or two gives you CO2, <coughs> okay? Other extreme is alpha is one, okay? That means your CO and O2, okay? So this is the first point here, when alpha is one, okay? Then that's the initial temperature, 298, and then alpha, is zero, that is Tf corresponding to when it's all CO2, okay? <coughs> but at equilibrium, you have a certain value of alpha, okay? So to calculate that, you can take different values of alpha, okay? So then you can calculate the composition for different values of alpha, and then you can calculate the temperature, okay? So <coughs> at the same time, you calculate the entropy using that equation, Okay, so when the entropy is maximum, that gives you the equilibrium composition. So that is just to understand the concept. You know, how do you get the equilibrium composition? Okay, now <coughs> the common way to do this is using the Gibbs-free energy. So Gibbs-free energy or Griff function, or there is a typo here, that's the R Gibbs function. <coughs> so we use now this D, uh, H, uh, G value, which is H minus T S. So did, did, was this covered yesterday? Yes, okay. Let's go to this equation. So basically, you know, use G, then you write equation for DG in terms of DH, T, DS, and S, DT. And then using the equation we just discussed upon TDS, we can get this equation. Okay. Then under constant pressure and temperature, this gives us DG, the change in G is either negative or zero. And then there's an expression you can get for GI you know, using again, you know, the original equation, you can get similarly like SI, you can get the equation for the Gibbs free, you know, a Gibbs function for species I. So substitute that, and this I follow from the Turns book, okay. So if you consider a reaction like this, they can write what are the DNIs, 
So, you have four species here A. So, in this equation capital A the, those are the species okay. and small a, small b those are the stoichiometric coefficients. So, for example, in the previous example CO plus half O2 A will be 1, B will be you know 1 half and so on okay and C will be with the correspondingly. So, anyway, so using this you can write expressions for the change in you know A, B, C and D. Substitute that so you have four species when you substitute that then you get the <coughs> equation for the equilibrium composition. So, this is the <laughs> well known equation for calculating equilibrium for any given reaction. Okay. So, what is delta G? Okay. So, that is the okay. this is the sum over G value for all the species C and D. So, this is products minus reactants okay. and uh, this is the equilibrium const constant at you know corresponding to pressure there are three different equilibrium constants defined. This is based on partial pressures. So, here you have the partial pressure non dimensionalized with respect to a reference pressure, reference pressure we always take as 1 okay. and these are the stoichiometric coefficients. So, basically the partial pressure on the numerators you have the products okay, denominator you have the reactants okay. and that is in the change in value of uh, Gibbs uh, function. So, the main thing is that this gives us additional equation for calculating composition because any given temperature you can find the right hand side. Okay. So, this gives us an equation because you can write always this partial pressure in terms of mole fraction <coughs> or concentrations. Okay. So, this is an example going back to similar example CO2. Okay. So, if you consider this reaction okay, and let us say we know the temperature. So, knowing the temperature let us so let us for example, let us take temperature of 2000 degrees. Okay. So, if you have CO2 in a in a system let us say in a reactor, but the temperature is 2000. I will just use that one to go faster. Okay. Okay, there I found the example. Okay, in the example they are using twenty five hundred. So, physically we know that at higher temperature there will be more CO 2 decomposed. Okay. So, there will be more C O and O 2. So, from the table at 2500 we can find these values. So, I will just write from this example. So, C O value is minus 327.245. So, delta G 0 327, 425 for CO <coughs> and then for O2 it is 0 and then for CO2 it is minus 396.152. So, minus means this will be plus. Three ninety six one five two. So, anyway, so this is sixty eight nine oh seven. Kilojoules per kilo mole. So, 
So, so then this value is 68907. Temperature is 2500. And Kp. is partial pressure of product side, product is, so partial pressure of CO, P reference, to power one, O2, P reference, one half, and then divided by P CO2, P reference. Okay, now, the starting, what we need to do is we need to calculate, okay, the mole fraction of CO2, CO and O2. So we have three unknowns, right? So one equation is the sum of these, one, okay? And this gives us the second equation. We need three equations, okay, so this gives us the second equation because the partial pressure you can write in terms of the mole fraction, okay. And the third equation comes from balancing the atomic species. So here the way it is done is slightly different way. So first of all, we can substitute now, replace this partial pressure by, okay, the mole fraction, okay. So this will give us Kp, let me skip a couple of steps. So using partial pressure, for example, partial pressure of CO is XCO, right? <coughs> times the total pressure, okay. So using this, this equation becomes then XCO times XO2 to the power one half divided by XCO2 and then you'll get the pressure term from here, okay. So P or P reference, you can see this, there's three, three half here and one, one here, so one half. Okay. <coughs> so that gives us the second equation. So Kp is this value, so now we can calculate this value because this is equal to exponential of minus uh, 1 over RUT delta G 0. So this value is known. Temperature is 2500. So right hand side it comes out to be 0 0.036. Okay. So this main thing is it gives a second another equation for calculating the, the mole fractions. Okay. And third equation come, uh, you know, balancing the atomic species. So the, the way that is written is, they consider the number of carbon atoms. Number of C atoms divided by the number O atoms. So this ratio doesn't change due to chemical reaction because the atomic species are conserved. So if initially you had CO2, so initially you can see that the number of carbon divided by number of oxygen atom is one half, okay? And now when you have the mixture with XCO, XCO and XO2, so for this mixture now we can write this ratio, okay? So this ratio will be number, so 
number of carbon atoms in synthesis, the mole fraction of CO2, okay, times one, that's the mole fraction of carbon, okay. Same thing here, XCO. Now, O atom, so you'll have two XCO2 plus XCO plus two XO. So that's in the denominator. So now you have three equations for three unknowns. So it's an easy problem now. Okay. You can replace everything in terms of one unknown. Okay. And in this case, what it so happens that you get a quadratic equation for, for the mole fraction. So everything is replaced in terms of XCO. So this leads to a quadratic equation for XCO, mole fraction of CO. Okay. So I'm just following that, that example. So once you get XCO, you can get the other mole fractions. Okay. So all you have to do is, you know, so you have this equation number one. So this is one, this is the other one, this is equal to one half, and this is the third equation. Okay. So this gives us little time to discuss the effect of temperature and pressure on the equilibrium composition. So the effect of pressure is coming through this term, okay? And you can see that as CO, more CO2 decomposes, okay, the pressure will increase in the system, right? So, uh, sorry, the pressure, effect of pressure will be different, okay, because of this term here, P or P reference, one half. <coughs> okay, so let me give you some values But remember the process we are considering a constant pressure and temperature. So, okay. So the pressure is 2500, oh sorry, the temperature is 2500, pressure is one atmosphere for this first case. So for 2500 and pressure one, a mole fraction of CO2 Remote is here somewhere. stay a few minutes. So anyway, for 2500, you can see the solution go down a little more. Okay. So CO2 is 0.66. Okay. So that means that 34% of pressure, I should mention. Pressure is given at the top. Okay, one atmosphere, CO2 is 0.818, okay? Now if you increase the temperature to 3000, then CO2 is 0.46, so more CO two decomposes. And what is the effect of pressure? 
Okay, first let's understand the effect of temperature. Okay, so if the temperature is increased, okay, there is more decomposition. So physical intuition also tells us there will be more decomposition because you're providing more energy. Okay, so there is more breaking of bonds. Now there is a Lee Chatelier principle. I think a lot of you are probably aware of that. Okay, that if you try to force a change in the system the system tries to oppose that change. Okay? I'm just paraphrasing that principle. Okay? So that's a well-known Lee Chatelier principle. So if you follow that, you can explain that you know, change, effect of pressure and temperature. Okay? Because if you look at this reaction, CO2 decomposing, that's the endothermic reaction. Okay? So if you try to increase the temperature, means you're trying to provide heat, okay? So it is trying to, you know, oppose that change. That means there'll be more endothermic reaction because you're trying to heat up the system, okay? So there's more decomposition of CO2, okay? Same way the effect of pressure, you increase the pressure, okay? So if you look at this reaction, <coughs> This reaction CO2 going to CO and O2, okay? So what does it do? It increases the number of moles, <coughs> okay? So it's trying to increase the pressure, okay? So if you try to increase the pressure, it tries to go the inver other way, okay? More CO2, because it tries to oppose the increase in pressure, okay? So, so there's a le less decomposition at higher pressures more decomposition at higher temperatures, okay? And this is true for any system in general, okay? So for example, if you take H2, okay? So if you just take H2, then we can write this reaction, 2H. So you can do this simple example using the same idea. <coughs> Take any temperature and pressure, okay? So same thing will happen here now. At higher, tem higher temperatures, there'll be less H2, there'll be more H in the system. And this is true for any complicated system. You have like a very different fuel. So there you have H2 and H, okay? And you'll see there's more, okay? Radical species, the temperature is higher. On the other hand, if the pressure is higher, then we see the concentration of radical species will be reduced. Okay, fewer radical species, okay, if the pressure is higher. Because you know you have to use this equation as part of the other equations to calculate the composition. Okay, now I can go back to the slide. There's another example I could do, which is not in the notes here. You know, if you consider a some real system like with a propane, then A over phi O2 plus 3.76 and 2. Now if phi is less than 1, okay, then typically you have 3 CO2, so then you mostly you have H2O. 
and CO2. Okay, there is no H2, no CO. Okay. And then you can write the equation for the composition. You can write the stoichiometry. Sorry? Yeah, 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 I'm writing, you know. And then let's say if is 0.5, using that example. And here we had, I think, 1 over phi minus 1, O2. And then N2, I took this over here. And then you'll have A over phi times 3.76 and 2. So you know the composition, OK, for phi less than 1. So you can calculate the adiabatic flame temperature, the flame temperature or the temperature of this mixture. Now, if when the phi is greater than 1, let's say 1.5, OK? Then the composition becomes unknown. Oh, this should have been 4 there, but. So now we write this as A, B, H2O. Okay. So those values are unknown. And then you have, let's say you only, it also contains CO, H2, and of course there's a certain amount of nitrogen. Okay. So now you see you have, okay, A, B, C, D, there are, okay, there are number of unknowns. So what you do now is, first you consider the atomic species balance, balance of atomic species. So carbon means three carbons. So that will give us one equation, which will be A plus C, right? Then you consider the balance of, let's say, hydrogen. So this is for C, for hydrogen, you have eight species, eight hydrogen atoms. So that will give us B, so 2B plus 2D. Okay, so one more equation. And then for O, okay. <coughs> Symbol A is a I think this, this has to be changed, yeah. Yes, times. Yeah. Yes, Okay, let's just use A star. Yes. I think this value doesn't change because no matter what you have, you have three carbons, okay, and eight hydrogens. <coughs> so this value will still be whatever you get from the stoichiometry, phi over phi, okay. Because no matter what it is, but the carbon and O, they will balance out, okay. So problem is the right hand side, okay. So then O, so how many you have? This is known. So this is 1.5. So phi over 1.5 times 2. So that's equal to no. So O2 is 2A plus B plus C. And nitrogen you can balance, okay? So you see you have three equations. So the fourth equation you need, that will come from the, again, the equilibrium equation, okay? So we consider now the equilibrium of, this is called the water gas shift reaction. 
So this gives us the additional or the fourth equation for calculating equilibrium. Okay. So that is the main principle that if you have more species on the product side, then you consider more equilibrium equations okay, to provide the, un, the needed number of equations in this for the system. Okay. So that's how we use this equilibrium equation to calculate the equilibrium composition. So let's say, for example, if you had also H here, okay, then you add one more equilibrium equation. So you have to solve a system of equations together, okay, to find the temperature and composition. So there are so, so without this, there are four equations for the composition. Okay, then the general procedure is you assume a temperature, let's say 2,000 degree. Okay, then using this equation, this will give us one more equation. We can calculate the delta G for the temperature. Okay, so then we have another equation for the mole fractions or A, B, C, D here. Okay. Plus these three equations or four equations. So we can solve this. Of course, you have to write a program to solve these four equations simultaneously. Once you find A, B, C, and D, the composition, then you can find the temperature. And then you iterate the whole process. You find a new temperature, use that to find the composition, and then you find the temperature. Now, in general, there are now software available okay, to solve this. So I was going to use, um, hopefully this afternoon, will use their software. Temkin also does this calculation, equilibrium comp composition calculation. Then there are other software which are available to do this calculation. Okay. So when I teach, you know, we use also this, you know, which comes with this textbook. It's called HP Flame software. Okay. So I, so this afternoon, Okay, with the help of uh, Professor, they will demonstrate, you know, I have sent him the software to demonstrate how to use that. So anyway, those, it's a very simple program to use and hopefully we'll demonstrate, you know, this afternoon. So, so this program, you know, what you basically you specify, what is the initial temperature, pressure, and then, okay, what is the equivalence ratio? And then you say whether you want the process to be constant pressure or constant volume. There are you know, one or two other options. Okay. And then it gives the composition for a given equivalence ratio. So you can run it for, it gives you results instantaneously almost. And then you can run for different equivalence ratios. And then you can you know, transport the data into Excel sheet and then plot whatever you know, results you want to plot. I don't know, there are some blank sh slides. So this is a result obtained by using this uh, software. So for each equivalence ratio, you have to run the program. So here it gives the temperature, okay, for the products, which is the adiabatic frame temperature, and then <coughs> It gives CO2 and H2O. So blue is the H2O, so this is H2O. This is CO2. And then you can see that for lean mixtures, okay, there's hardly any H2 or CO. Okay. So mostly it is CO2 and H2O. <coughs> and then here we have the <laughs> you know, minor species, okay? So their mole fractions are very small. So these values are like 10 to the power minus three, so less than 1,000, okay? So here you have OH, O, and H, okay? And there are some other minor species. So it gives several minor species, not all of them. Anyway, the other species are really minor, you know, very, very small amount. Okay, so this is how the program works. 
then equilibrium temperature is uh, more or less like a AFT. Is it sir? Oh, what is AFT? It is yeah, more or less, it's not exactly equal because for radi you know, adiabatic flame temperature, you have only CO2 and H2O. Okay. So this is like, but you know, it's, yeah, it's, there is no okay, heat loss here. Okay. It's still adiabatic system. But some of the CO2 and H2O, they are converted to you know, CO and H2. Okay. <coughs> Now, <coughs> this is with the simple software. Then uh, these results are obtained. Actually, these are, I think, probably obtained by using the same kind of software. But then I have some other results. Uh, these are obtained, you know, using the same software. Th this is directly from the book. Okay, copied from the book. I think some couple of slides got lost. I had some other results, but anyway, those are. So when I teach, you know, we also use this Kempkin software. Okay. Only advantage is Kempkin, you can specify a range of equivalence ratios or range of temperature. So it gives values for all those, you know, so it gives a quick, you know, quickly it gives results for, you know, various conditions. Then it has other options, you know, you can mix two fuels, like if you, you can have natural gas and hydrogen, and you can see what is the effect of the hydrogen on the adiabatic flame temperature or composition, okay. Or you can add, okay, some species like CO2, okay, and see what is the effect of adding CO2 on the adiabatic flame temperature, okay. Because those are, for real application, you can see, you know, the first hand, you know, what is the effect, okay using, you know, these kind of softwares. I think for uh, diffusion uh, flames, you know, turbulent flames, they use, you know, some of these results, you know, using this equilibrium so, yeah, calculations. 